Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us on what is uh, yet another busy day. Uh, first of all, just to start off, I can confirm that we have had uh, 10 new cases of COVID-19 reported uh, this morning. Uh, these are two, why don't, we go, why don't we say, nine of the 10 are all uh, originating from overseas. Uh, with one at this stage unknown. So these are fairly new numbers and we're still doing the contact tracing uh, to actually understand the, uh, the full background details of these travellers. Now, importantly, um, uh, one is in hospital and is currently in a serious but stable condition. Now, these, uh, this particular cohort of positive cases are slightly different in that three of them are known healthcare workers They've come from a range of healthcare settings, although I stress none of those from a general practice setting. Our contact tracing is now in process, uh, not only of in relation to those, those uh, particular patients' movements, but also their work colleagues and the people that they've been treating in, the, in that healthcare setting. Um, we will provide more details once we've undertaken um, all that contact tracing and, um, and we can provide more details in terms of the actual healthcare setting in which they're operating. Can also say today we are releasing details of new protocols in relation to testing for healthcare workers. Uh, this is a piece of work which was um, already underway um, but comes on a day obviously where this is uh, particularly in sharp focus. These new testing uh, protocols will, will require any healthcare worker who has a fever and who has an acute respiratory illness to be treated as a suspect case. Uh, the department will arrange for specific healthcare clinics for the healthcare workers to make sure that they can get tested in an appropriate setting. So these new arrangements are obviously very important and um, because what we know, we know we need to do is to uh, protect our healthcare workers because they are the ones who will be treating people ultimately who are, um, who are um, COVID-19 positive. What I'll do now is just pass you across to Dr. Robin Lawrence, uh, Deputy Chief Health Officer, who can provide you with an update in terms of those um, healthcare worker um, testing regimes as also a daily update on the COVID clinics. Robin. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So as already mentioned, we will now implement testing for healthcare workers. I reiterate that testing is for healthcare workers who have a fever over 37 and a half degrees and an acute respiratory illness. They can attend the COVID clinics at any point in time, but importantly, they should immediately remove or not attend their workplace should they become unwell from here on in. Those results will be passed back to healthcare workers as they are currently through our clinics or through the routine testing procedures. The COVID clinics over the weekend have continued to be relatively busy. Across the three clinics in the metropolitan area, we've seen about 800 patients yesterday, and of those, 340 were tested. So um, it's good to see that the numbers have not grown dramatically, but we are still seeing people attend those clinics who don't, do not meet the definition to attend. So can I remind people the criteria to attend the clinic are if you have had overseas travel in the last 14 days, or have had close contact with a confirmed case of COVID-19 and have symptoms, please attend the clinic as soon as possible. If you don't meet those symptoms, please do not attend your workplace, but you don't need to come to the clinic as it is unlikely that at this time you have COVID. Thank you very much, Robin. So obviously uh, over the last 24 hours, you would have seen the uh, declaration from the Prime Minister in relation to travel arrangements. That is people self-isolating when they return from overseas a ban on cruise ships for the next 30 days at least. And, and obviously uh, we now need to um, get further details in terms of the third declaration, which is uh, the gatherings of 500 people or more. Uh, currently the uh, Communicable Diseases Network of Australia is meeting um, on the East Coast. They will be putting more meat to the bones in relation to the guidelines for gather uh, mass gatherings. And um, in addition to that, they'll be providing advice to the AHPPC who will report to the National Cabinet, which will be meeting again tomorrow. So we'll have more updates in relation to the application of the gatherings of 500 people. As reported earlier, the Minister for Tourism and myself will be meeting with uh, peak bodies of 
of the hospitality industry on Wednesday morning to go through those guidelines and explain and work with them on the application. Are there any questions? Inev well, community spread is inevitable, but uh, and we will won't stop this virus impacting on our community. But together, as a community, we can minimise the impact and flatten the curve. And that comes down to being calm, be common, take common sense in your approach to this, and above all, follow the instructions of the health authorities. Now is the time for the community to act. Make sure you look out for each other. Make sure we're resilient and kind to and supportive of each other. But most importantly, make sure you follow the advice around self-isolation to avoid any community spread of the disease. There will come a time when inevitably we see this, we see this disease spread within the community, but we can control the pace and, the, and, and the, the volume of that spread by just taking important social distancing measures now. And that's why you've seen the steps taken by the National Cabinet to really make sure that we, that we move to those measures to minimise the impact.